The New England Patriots' Bill Belichick is known as one of the greatest coaches in American sports history. Today we take a closer look at Bill Belichick, the person, his passion for lacrosse, and how he continues to give back to the game he loves. Bill, as a boy growing up in Annapolis, what ultimately drew you to the game of lacrosse? Uh, you know, I loved it. Navy had great teams, and uh, it seemed like half the team was made up of uh, Navy football players, so they would go play lacrosse and, uh, instead of going out for spring ball. Those were back in the days when guys would come to the Naval Academy, had never heard of lacrosse, had never seen lacrosse, uh, and by their sophomore year, they were all Americans. Because there were so many football players on the team, I started following it, and uh, Coach Bilderback had uh, national championship after national championship throughout the 60s. Everyone always talks about Jimmy Lewis, the Navy attackman. How good was he? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, stick was tight, like a tennis racket, really tight. And, uh, you know, Jimmy Lewis and Jim Brown. And, uh, wow. you know, that's, uh, you know, those, those are the two, you know, superstars. Then, of course, there are all the, the Navy Hopkins, Maryland players. Uh, in Virginia and really I'd say almost every weekend in the spring from probably when I was about maybe 14, 13, 14 years old, like there'd be a lacrosse game. There'd either be one at Navy, there'd be one at Hopkins, there'd be one at Maryland. Uh, and so, you know, we'd get to it either, you know, climb the fence or we had tickets to the Navy <laughs> games, but climb the fence over in Homewood on the other side of the field there by um, a University where there used to be a chain link fence um, or, or at Maryland up at Bird Stadium, which you, know, you could usually get in there too. So ultimately, you go up to Wesleyan, Connecticut. What was your college lacrosse experience like? Uh, well, it was great. Well, first of all, I went from Annapolis to uh, Phillips Andover. Um, so I played defense in Annapolis. When I got to Andover, um, you know, I played attack. And then at Wesleyan, first year was defense. Then kind of a year on attack in midfield. And I and, uh, was a backup goalie. So you know, it was kind of fun. Got to do a lot of different things. And um, so it was a good experience. We weren't too good my first two years. Uh, my second two years, we, we had really good teams in NSCAC, and um, you know, it was a lot of good lacrosse up here in New England. Uh, it was a little, little different uh, than what I was used to in Annapolis, a little more uh, stick swinging, a little more uh, <laughs> chopping, but um, it's good. And of course, it's grown, and now it's, you know, it's really a big, big part of New England sports. Describe the impact the sport of lacrosse has had on your entire family. Uh, pretty big. Yeah, pretty big. Um, it was... You know, it's a little different than football. Lacrosse is a sport you like to practice. Yeah. You know, I, I'm asked to look forward every day to going out on the, on the practice field just to practice lacrosse. You know, uh, whether it was doing fast break drills, or it was doing one-on-ones, whether it was playing, you know, scrimmaging. You know, football is more of a grind it out kind of yeah. sport, and sometimes practice isn't the most fun thing. Uh, but lacrosse, it always was. I always look forward to lacrosse season, uh, other than the conditioning runs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you and me and both. so <laughs> that was, you know, that was a great, you know, part of the game because you felt like you were always playing. And then, uh, you know, we were in Cleveland, but then uh, moved from Cleveland to New England, then Long Island, and that was kind of the formative years for uh, the kids growing up. And so they got a stick in their hand, and they had a stick in their hand in Cleveland, but it was a little less structured. And uh, once we got um, you know, to New England or New York, and then back to New England. Uh, they played, you know, every spring, every summer, summer camps, and, you know, Stephen, um, you know, scholarship to Rutgers, man had a good career at Wesleyan, you know, Brian, uh, that's how they played since they were kids. So we always go out there and toss it around. I think I used to be the best one, now I'm the worst one. <laughs> so I've seen that transition kind of run its course. You mentioned uh, the three kids playing, and when I watch you coach, very little do I ever see nerves. When you watch Amanda coach, she's the head coach at Holy Cross, how's that experience like for you? Yeah, it's a lot tougher being a parent. It really is, you just, uh, especially when they're the coach, because you, you know, live and die on every, on every possession, on every play. Uh, when they're playing, it's only when they're directly involved that you're as involved. When they're coaching, you're, you're really involved in everything. But, uh, it's fun, really proud of her, you know, proud of, of all the kids and, and particularly what they've done, you know, in lacrosse and, and football. But, you know, for her, you know, it gets the blood pressure up a little bit watching her, watch her coach, watching them play. The Bill Belichick Foundation, it provides coaching mentorship, financial assistance to individuals and organizations in both football and lacrosse. How did that all start? Well, those two sports have been great to our family, going back to uh, my dad, who lived the American dream. Uh, his father worked in a steel mill. He played college, high school football, uh, you know, got a scholarship to college, lived in the gym, worked his way through college, went on to coach, and 
uh, you know, was able to, through football, um, you know, kind of, kind of have a career and, you know, not, not be a, you know, steel worker his whole life. And so um, that was a great opportunity for him. Um, the sport's been great to me, uh, and, and football across has been a big part of, of our kids' lives. So this is an opportunity to give back to worthy students, worthy uh, organizations uh, that need financial assistance and try to do other things. So just, just trying to give back to two things that have been really good to me and, and, uh, and my family through three generations. What are you most proud of in regards to the foundation? Uh, well, I'd just say the, the individuals that we've been able to help, and, and that's you know, been both teams and individual scholarships, primarily in the New England area, but we're national and international. Uh, you know, had a, built a, a field in Uganda. But built a field in Uganda. A cross field in Uganda. That was yep. amazing. I saw the pictures. Yeah, Belichick Field. I know nobody's ever yeah. heard of <laughs> me there, <laughs> but this guy. <laughs> well, what'd he do? But, um, you know, even from coast to coast, we, we were involved with different organizations and, you know, worthy scholarship recipients. So, you know, we feel like we're, we're giving it to the right people and that they've, they've been very productive with it. Yeah. When you go to a lacrosse game or you watch it on TV, what do you normally focus on? Now, I really like to watch the off ball on the offensive end. Um, you know, there's so much going on in front of the, the crease. There's a lot of activity there. You know, I love the, the face offs, kind of the, the loose balls. Um, you know, the extra man strategy, uh, offensively and defensively, you know, the slides and how quickly that's done uh, is, is pretty fascinating to me. The game's changed a lot since I played, and certainly the, uh, the defensive strategy uh, in terms of taking the angles away and, you know, that really Coach Tierney, yeah. um, you know, kind of say emphasized, sure. you know, at, at Princeton, um, those defensive principles are a lot different than the ones I was taught. So, you know, trying to understand in that, or, or Coach Petromal, yeah. different slide systems and, uh, when different, we both different play matchups. One on one, you're on an island. Yeah, and, and you try to stay between the man and <laughs> yeah. the goal, and now you know taking the angles and all. It's a different, it's a little different. So that's interesting. If you could change one thing about the sport of lacrosse in regards to how it's played on the field, what would it be? You know, I would take out the substitution. Maybe take out uh, you know a long stick or two. You know, I think that back in the '70s there were a lot more. You know, 16, 14, 17, yeah. 15 games where it was up and down. There was no substitution. There were no long sticks. I'm not saying it's in a bad place now, but, you know, I, I enjoy the end-to-end -end action. And, and uh, you know, middies being able to play both offense and defense, uh, you know, as opposed to specializing. And so, you know, I thought it was, I think that part of it was fun. You know, does the sport need a shot clock? I don't know. That, that's, a, that's a tough yeah. question. So it's going to bring in zone defense, more yep. zone defenses and all that. It'll be interesting to see how that unfolds, but you know, I like the end-to-end -end action and, and I like the midfielders you know, playing on both ends, not just one or the other. Lacrosse at its, at its purest form. As a coach, and not even in the football sense, but you coach some youth lacrosse when your kids were growing up and mm -hmm. you're always watching other coaches. What do you think the most important aspect of a coach is when dealing with players? Uh, well, I think the number one thing you have to be able to do is help the player. Um, I think if you can help the player, then the player usually will be receptive and listen to you, whether that's, you know, on the field, off the field, work ethic, technique, you know, whatever it is. I think if the, if the athlete feels like you can actually help them, you know, become better at whatever area it is you're, you're emphasizing, uh, you know, then there's, then it's worthwhile. You feel good and, and he gets something out of it. If, if you're not able to really help or assist the player for whatever the reason, then, then there's not much production. One day you will retire as a football coach. If the phone rang and someone wanted you to be a lacrosse coach, what would your response be? Yeah, it'd be tough. I don't know if I know enough about oh, it. Oh, come really. on. Yeah, you do. It's, uh, yeah, the, I think the game's, the game's kind of you know, passed me up a little bit. I wouldn't be naive enough to think that that I would be able to, you know, keep up with all that. I could be your volunteer coach, maybe uh, well, okay. a bunch of good. other guys, get my brother shagging the balls. Yeah. We could have a good time doing yeah, it. Yeah, I'll just call some timeouts. <laughs>
that every year I look in the draft and I don't see anybody that, yeah. that has the physical attributes that he would have to be a, and the desire a safety. Too. Yeah, well, oh, absolutely. Everything yeah, absolutely. he does, he's he's locked in. He's I do a radio show with him every week, and yeah. we become really good friends. But you know, when yeah. he was coming out of Hopkins, he's like, I want to give football a try. <laughs> like Paul, you're yeah. the face of lacrosse. <laughs> you are the biggest lacrosse player in the world. You can't play football. He's like, yeah, I guess you're right. How big do you think it is for lacrosse kids to play multiple sports? I think it's great. I wish I wish there was more of it. Period. But you know, yeah. these kids are in seventh grade and they're on travel teams and they got to pick a sport and yeah. it's tough. Um, so grab my stick. No, we're good. We got one. I can't. You're gonna want. You're gonna want this one. Try am? Me. Yes. Let me throw on my Hopkins shirt. I'll be right Fine. there. All right. So, I got this made for you. Oh, awesome. Pitch is sick. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, this is a little lighter shaft. Heads up back there. How often do you pick up a stick? It's been a little while now. You got both hands, though. So that's one of the biggest compliments I've ever had in my life. What? So when I went down and was at Hopkins practice, and I said, uh, can I warm up, you know, can I help warm up Schwartzman? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, sure, get out of here. And like, so then when it was over, Petromal, I asked him. What do you think of Belichick's shot? Is he righty or is he lefty? And he didn't know. And he didn't know. Get out of here. I'm like, oh, there we go. Because I've told my kids, I'm never going to tell you what I am. So they don't know? Nope. I'm never now gonna I'm tell looking. you what I am. Now I'm looking. If you were coaching a lacrosse team and Gronk came to tryouts, what position would you put him at first? If I could teach him any stick work, I'd put him at crease attack. Let him go out and then, you know, clear out and just let him, you know, let him go to the goal. How about Brady? Put him in the goal. Put him in the goal? <laughs> I would have guessed behind at attack, like a Stanwick or someone. Can't run. <laughs> I mean, can't run, can't dodge, can't run. Edelman? Yeah, be a good midfielder. Good midfielder. So to this day, if I was to ask Steven what hand is your dad, he wouldn't know. Nope. He might guess. What do you think of all the chaos in college lacrosse right now? Do you think we'll see chaos in May or just regular season and then the... Yeah, you know, that's a good question. You know, one thing I didn't really realize is how much exams play a part. Oh, yeah. Tierney's always talking about that. I, I think on some of those teams, you know, I mean, even the Ivy team, something like yeah. that, like, yeah, I have no idea when their exams are, but I could see it being a factor. Yeah, I think Notre Dame's had issues in the Notre past. Notre Dame, every year yeah. they've played ACC. in that championship, it's been yep. their graduation day, yeah. too. All right, let's head back in. Two one. All right, 2-1, man up. Always stop them. You're a righty. No way. No? You're a lefty? On both. <laughs> both. No one knows. Who was the Yorktown guy you played with? Bobby? Uh, McKeel. Would he tell me? Bobby probably would. Yeah, Bobby probably would. Two thousand fourteen was a magical run for Albany's Lyle Thompson. He won the Tourton Trophy, broke the NCAA record for points in a single season, and was a human highlight reel. Being a coach is like being a parent. I mean, it's a great, in my opinion, it's a grave responsibility. You know, my job, I'm charged with helping these young men become the best version of themselves that they can be. 